I have been talking about birth rate declines and birth rates globally, and I was asked to talk about some of the countries in Africa. So I decided to look into a few. Now, what I am seeing is that the, the, birth, the birth rate is declining in some countries. And despite the fact that it is much higher, the birth rates across the, the continent of Africa, it's much higher than the global birth rates that I've seen. In many cases, some of the countries are on the decline from where they were a couple of generations ago. So let's look at some of these numbers, even just from this screenshot um, and like some of the, the birth rates that I've seen globally, like America at 1.6, Canada is around 1.5 or 1.6. Some of the Asian countries like 1.2, 1.3. Many of the European countries are at one point. Um, two or three children per woman. The birth rates in um, some of these African countries are much higher. So this is, um, the blue is Nigeria's birth rate and is currently um, at 5.3 births per woman. Now, if you look, you can see that Niger is close to seven and these are 20, 2020 numbers. And Ghana is a little less than four at 3.62 per I mean, children per woman. So even just these three that pop up on this screenshot are fairly different. So let's look at some of the causes and some of the articles that I have found. This article was put out this summer. Nigeria's population boom, path to poverty or prosperity? Nigeria's population is growing at an exponential rate. Harnessing the potential of youth is possible if the right measures are taken, experts say. Otherwise, the country's problems could grow worse. So let's see what's going on with Nigeria. The caption of this screenshot says Nigeria's population is set to double to more than 401 million by 2050. Sani Amaru a resident of the large slum of Makoko near Lagos, Nigeria's most populous city, has three wives and 18 children. Having a large family is a blessing from God. I'm a product of a large family. I like a large family. As a youth, I decided that when I was older, I would have a large family. According to a UN estimate, Nigeria's total population will double from 200 million to more than 401 million by 2050. If, the, if this trend isn't stopped, it will exceed 728 million by 2100. Michael Ayamga, the director of the West Africa Center for Sustainable Rural Transformation, said Nigeria needs to take urgent preventative measures. We also need to start intensifying some birth control education. He added that growth in itself isn't bad, but we need to manage and be able to control the rate at which it goes. And so this is just a picture of what a um, part of Nigeria looks like. Nigeria's fertility rate stands at 5.1 children per woman compared with the global rate of 2.4 births per woman. So this country is literally doubling the amount of kids that women globally are putting out. Nigeria facing challenges of a growing population. According to UNICEF, more than 65 million people in Nigeria are between the ages of 10 and 24. These young people will grow up and enter into what we call the reproductive age. He said this will cause the, um, the population to grow even further. And this is just to juxtapose with many of the other populations are literally very old, like some Asian countries, some European countries, America. We have a very top half of our population that are elderly, whereas Africa is a very young nation. Nigeria's difficulties, which range from acute poverty to political instability, will increase if population growth remains out of control. Citizens such as Joseph Blabo say they are aware of the problem and need to do something about it. Growing up watching the situation of the country, how the economy gets worse by the day, I think I really made a good decision not wanting to have too many children. He said it was hard to care for many children at the same time, ensure their futures. The resources available are unable to meet the basic needs of a growing population. This has resulted in inadequate facilities in our health sector, food insecurity, housing, transportation, and even employment. So they're having all these kids. The nation is very young. So many people haven't even entered into the reproductive phase of their lives, and they are already facing these, these constraints.
All right, so this is a screenshot of where Senegal's birth rate is. It is currently um, 4.45 births per woman, and that's as of 2020. Um, and in this screenshot, we see Niger and Ghana again. So let's just look at a little bit more of what is going on on the African continent. Slow decline of African birth rates. According to a longstanding rule of thumb, sub-Saharan Africans on average consider five to be the ideal number of children. Recent data suggests that families in countries like Senegal and Ghana have fewer children today. So let's get into this article. So this article was put out this past June, and you can see the map of Sub-Saharan um, Africa. It says, in low-income countries, children are seen as future providers. They offer a safety net in old age. Having many children is thus linked to the prestige and honor. It, it fits the picture that Sub-Saharan Africa, the poorest world nation, has the highest pregnancy rate, 218 per 1,000 women per year worldwide, according to Guttenmacher um, Institute, a U.S.-based think tank that specializes in reproductive health. Nonetheless, babies are not necessarily considered to be blessings. The Guttenmacher data show that the region has the highest rate of unwanted pregnancies, estimated at 91 per 1,000. In other words, about 42% of pregnancies are unintended. Almost 40% of them are aborted, according to the numbers. Sub-Saharan Africa, moreover, has the highest rate of child marriage. So it's not like many of these girls have choices. All right, so it has the highest rate of child marriage with 35% of female youth experiencing their wedding below the age of 18. Experts reckon that the birth rate of adolescent girls in Sub-Saharan Africa is twice the global average. The number of young people entering into childbearing age is also correlated with abortions, maternal illness, and deaths. So many of these people, these girls, are entering into an age where they have no choices. So we have um, in food insecurity, poverty, we have housing insecurity, transportation issues, but yet they are being forced into um, they're being forced into marriage and into, in, into children. Child, child marriage leads to poor family planning and bad health outcomes. In a similar vein, an essay in the journal BMC International Health and Human Rights reported that child brides are eight times more likely to have three or more children than their peers who marry later because they have no choices, because they're children. Unmet demand for contraceptives. Sub-Saharan Africa has the lowest contraceptive prevalence rate at 29%. Less than, less than half of the demand for modern contraceptive met methods is met in the region. The unmet need is the greatest in rural areas and poor communities. So these people are poor. The girls are getting married younger because they have no choices. So it's not like these girls are having children because they are actively planning these families because they don't have choices. No doubt there is need to invest more in issues that concern youth. This includes education, not only regarding reproductive health, it also includes better health services, ensuring contra contraceptives are available to all who need them. Obviously, it also includes creating more job opportunities by building infrastructure and developing the economy. But also, if you even if you give people reproductive health information and sex education. It doesn't matter if you are stripping the choices away because you're effectively selling your girls to these older men. You're you're selling your girls. So even if they have some education about reproduction, if they don't have actual freedom to do what they want with their bodies, then does reproductive care really matter? At some point, we need to discuss where freedoms are for these people. Teenage girls matter. They must not be condemned to early motherhood. Instead of raising large families with many needy members, they should be empowered to find jobs, earn money, contribute to their country's economic success, and determine their own fate. I talk about global issues because we have rights here in America, but globally, girls are still being basically sold and bartered like goats. And so we need to keep our eyes open and be aware that many of us are still living as second class citizens or living like that of goats or servants to these people that even still look like us. So these things still need to be talked about. Y'all jump in the comment section and let me know what you think. Like, comment, share.